here's a quick update of what's going on in the greenhouse. Here's my mini bok choy coming along pretty nicely. This is going to be in here for another three or four weeks. I think it's four weeks. This is coming out in two days. This is the Carlton. It really took off. You can see how big that's gotten. And then up here, after the Carlton, I have the mini Swiss chard. This was what I'll be harvesting next week for my CSA program. These sunny days have really make a big difference. Even though it's been bitter cold, sunshine's been wonderful. Here's the Chinooku, the chrysanthemum greens. Here's the watercress. I think the last time I showed these to you guys, they were little uh, balls of leaves. So they're starting to spread out, and these will be harvested in two weeks. Here's some red cloud, which is a red tatsoi. I just put these in the channels last week. You can tell with the sun, we're starting to get a little bit of red color with them. So I thought I'd show you guys something I'm trialing here. It's a red open cabbage. It's kind of like a, between tokabacana and napa cabbage. So I'm hoping this takes off here in the NFT system. I think it'll be a great addition to my things I'd like to grow. You're probably wondering what these are. They look like little pieces of grass. Well, I'm trying some leeks because I know we like to cook with them, so hopefully I can grow them. Here's something else I'm trying to grow. Don't know much about it, but it's kohlrabi. So hopefully this will take off and grow like the uh, fennel does for me. I'll keep you updated. Hey everyone, back outside again for the umpteenth time these past couple days. Haven't been getting much done inside the greenhouse because we've had all kinds of issues and problems going on around here. So I'll take you through some of the stuff that's been going on and how we're dealing with it. But we're surviving. Can't complain. It's nice and sunny today. So one of the issues we've had was the snow. We got quite a bit of it and it was hard walking back here to the greenhouse. So Doug was able to get his bulldozer out and make some paths for me so we can get back and forth easily. <music> another problem that we encountered yesterday we came in and this fitting right there was leaking and these are the feed lines from the hot water boiler that's outside obviously it's not good to have that water from the boiler spilling all over the ground so uh, we turned off the boiler and turned off all the valves and found that this was the problem the boiler came with shark bites as the connectors for the peck pipe. These are were inside, and look at this. Just garbage. These shark bites are very expensive, and I don't, I don't like them. I've never used them before, but they were part of the system that the outdoor boiler came with, and so I put them on, but I'll never use these again. We actually have two more fittings here on each side of the air exchangers that are shark bites and I will definitely be replacing those this summer. Luckily when the fluid started leaking out of that fitting we were able to catch it and we only lost probably about four or five gallons. If but we would have lost the fluid inside the boiler not only would we have lost the boiler but we would have also lost the greenhouse. So just can't believe the combination of problems we had yesterday oh and look the wood piles going down big time
So these are the tanks that the oil gets pumped into. Then this is the main chart area and that meter there is for our house. It comes off the byline and that gauge at the top still shows zero which means we have problems. And then this is the separator and stuff from the oil well. So hopefully somebody gets out here soon and gets this thing going for us. Or we're going to be burning a lot of wood and spending a lot of time keeping everything going. So even though yesterday we had all the problems, as you can see by the sleds out here, we had the grandsons over and uh, Devin and Bobby went on a date and we had fun sledding with the kids. Usually when we're, the kids were bigger, they would go up and down this big hill. But since the boys are uh, four and seven, we had them go up and down the driveway hill, which was perfect for them. They had a blast. So you can tell how nice it is having the driveway plowed. I can get around a lot easier. And I can go up and check on the cattle all the time. Because you know when it's winter time out, you got to make sure they have plenty of water and feed. And so I've been coming out a couple times a day to check on them. And Doug was nice enough as I get down here towards the lane. He did a nice path for me so I can walk down to the, the younger steers that are down on the one side of the driveway. And I can get down there easily to see them. And then when he brings hay, it's easier for him to drive with a skidster. And I have a place where I can unwrap the hay and we can get it into their hay uh, feeder. I see Kian's walking down the path right now. Like I said, it's a beautiful day and sunny out. Sunshine always makes things better. There's my path. <laughs>